Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to read and analyze the four divine diagrams uh, on two different cards with two different formats of divine diagrams. So, uh, whichever you see, it's going to be easy later on for you guys to uh, use them. The first one is the divine diagram for uh, four territory from 2006 up to uh, 2000. 11 and as you see uh, Actually, I'm showing you the index the main index for the uh, volume diagrams, so uh, What we have here the first one is the general inf information uh, we will start from there very soon and uh, after that we have a List of all the systems, so it's going to be easier for you guys to find the system that you are after like if you're looking for the engine cooling system or a starting system or powertrain and uh, if we scroll down all the way uh, you see two important items down here as well the first one is the component location views to find the component locations and the other one is the connector views uh, we're gonna need this one to get some ideas about the uh, pin locations and the connector connector itself as well so we're gonna need these two uh, most of the times okay uh, let's have a look at the general information uh, because there is something important here and what you see in this table you see the color code you see the a list of the colors uh, for the wires because obviously you guys are gonna see the abbreviation for any uh, any color of the wires shown on the one diagram and this table shows you uh, actually which one is which like uh, B is for the black BR for the brown GR for the gray and all the way uh, down to T so there are some examples if you have gr it's gonna be gray but if you have g dash r it means your wire has two colors green and red and if you have br dash y it means it's brown and yellow so if you scroll down <clears throat> if you scroll down you're gonna see some other uh, details on the general information like uh, different symbols like uh, just talking about the connectors, but I'm gonna explain all these uh, on the wind diagrams later on. Let's go back to main index and between all these units, I'm gonna uh, start from something much easier at the first, like horn. Uh, so it, there's not gonna be so many components there, and then we will move on to something more complicated like the powertrain control system okay let's go for the horn as you see this page is for the horn wind diagram uh, first of all what what you see this is actually the the whole page not many components but let's zoom in and see what components we have here uh, so the first one for any components <coughs> Uh, you have a name next to the component like this one clock spring and you have the horn switch here uh, on the steering wheel so junction box for the ground and if we scroll down this is BEM and the horn itself is here and the other one this one is engine fuse box because you guys are gonna have the horn relay here and the fuse okay but first of all how we can read this one diagram then I'm gonna show you uh, how to get some more details in case you have any form so <clears throat> uh, so for any fault that you may have uh, before before I started to actually dive into the wine diagram you need to try to read it you need to try to read the wine diagram then you can analyze what could be what could be a possible problem, right? So first of all, for reading any wine diagram, you guys need to have 
uh, some start point, right? You need to have something to start from. Like for a uh, horn switch, the, the main start point is going to be the horn switch, right? So for activating the horn, so you need to push the horn switch first. So you need to start from there, okay? So what happens if I try to activate the horn? I push the switch to close the switch. By closing the switch, this ground from here is going to travel all the way from this junction box. It's going to travel all the way from here through this uh, horn switch. And it's going to go back from here, from this wire. And I'm going to explain all these wires later on as well. And this is just a feedback, a signal to BEM that horn is going to operate right now. And this ground will be delivered to the horn relay okay and uh, if you guys know how relay works uh, obviously you know that inside the relay we have a coil and a switch for that coil we're gonna need the ground obviously that ground is already delivered by the horn switch and we're gonna need a power as well to activate or to energize the relay so that power is provided from here, from this uh, 15 amp fuse, which is for horn and which is inside the engine fuse box. So this one is delivered from here uh, to the horn relay. Obviously, when our relay on the coil, uh, when it has the ground and power, it's going to start uh, creating the magnetic field to close the switch. But closing the switch, what happens? This power, which is actually shared between the coil and between the switch, is going to travel from here to the switch, which is already closed by the energized relay. It's going to go out from here all the way to the horn. And because horn has the permanent ground, uh, this power is going to activate the horn. Okay, this is how we read the uh wind up ground okay so so what happens if if you think the problem is from here somewhere here if you see that uh when switch is closed there is nothing delivered so that ground is not delivered to the relay okay so it means anytime you press the horn switch you should have this relay energized but when you see that this relay is not energized, obviously the first thing that you need to check is the horn fuse. If this horn fuse is okay and you have the battery voltage on these two ends of the relays, obviously the thing is going to be this ground. Maybe switch is not delivering the ground. There is something wrong in the uh, switch itself. Okay, so you need to find the location of this component. Uh, you need to find a connector co connector for this. And the pins as well because this is the input and this is the output, right? Okay. So for the horn switch, as you see, we have a number here which is C-166. So this is actually the connector code, and connect we can use the connector code for two reasons. First of all, to find the component location, and secondly for uh, finding the connector itself to find more information more details about the connector because uh, We have two pins here, but we're not sure if C166 uh, Has just two pins or more Right, so it if it has more pins we need the actually the location for These pins as well, right? So that's why we need the component location and we need the connector details as well Okay, so remember this ones, please. Uh, C166, and these are the pin numbers. 1B is the output, and 57CH is the input. Okay, let's find the location first, and then go for the connector details. If you remember the index, at the very beginning I told you, uh, if you scroll down, you will find the component location views and the connector views. So I go to the connector component location views, and you see here there is exactly uh, a photo here refer actually referring to all the connector 
uh, locations. And what we are after is uh, this one, C166, which is located just right here. So this is a connector location, but is it enough? No. Obviously, most of the time, you know the connector location most of the time, I'm saying. But uh, what about the details of the connector? For the details, if you remember, again, we can go back to the connector views. If you click on the connector views, you have a list of the connectors. And this is, there it is, uh, C166. If you click on the C166, you have it here, plug a spring. Okay, so C166 is your connector. And if you remember the pin numbers, one of them was 1B, the other one 57CH. Okay, so 1B was the output, 57CH was input. So we already know this is the actually the connector itself, and we have the pin numbers. So yeah, super easy. So we can uh, take any action we want uh, to check the input, to check the output, or anything else we need but is it enough we, we might need something else as well let's go back to the whole system so we have the connector code right here so see for the other one we have the connector code there uh, we have already the pin numbers and you see the pin numbers are not as usual like because for many other companies we have uh, some numbers here which is obviously easier to find the pin numbers but here you don't have that typical number so that's uh, actually that's what makes it a bit more uh, challenging so to find the pins and the wires more easy actually more easy we, we need the color code as well for the wires and this is exactly what i showed you guys at the beginning on general information so here you have some color code right so you have the color code just right here next to each wire okay so like y dash black is going to be yellow black so this one is going to give you the uh, details for uh, the wire color as well okay so let's go to uh, power train system let's start uh, having a look at something more complicated to see how we can <coughs> find the wire so this is the power train control system, page one. Obviously, uh, more complicated than the other one. Like you have, you have the uh, actually fuel pump here, and this one is the engine control module, and all the components are connected to that. And if you go to the second page, so on the second page you see the components. Oil temperature sensor, crankshaft sensor, map, throttle position, uh, again, throttle position sensor. And we have the NOx sensors, okay? So all the components are here, okay? Uh, for finding the components, you have the name written just next to the component, okay? So just if I show you here, here you see the ignition coils and you have the injectors here. Uh, this one is referring to the uh, six cylinder engine. So that's why we have six ignition coils and we have six injectors. And ignition coils are coded by A, B, C, D, E, F. And here, here you see the injectors, one, two, three, up to uh, number six. So if you have anything wrong with the ignition coils, if you have miswire and you think it's from the ignition cord, uh, for checking the ignition cords, like for cylinder number one. So this is the ignition cord for cylinder number one. If you, as you see, it it got it's got just two pins. One pin, one pin, which is uh, pin number sixteen A, uh, which is connected to actually one wire, which is red green. This wire is red green. It's connected all the way from 
this wire to if we chase the wiring all the way from here to the fuse box to ignition coil 15 amp fuse and then IG relay okay so if this fuse is broken obviously you won't have the power on all other uh, ignition coils as well and obviously you won't be able to start the car okay so I'm just trying to analyze the wind diagram right now so you see for uh, ignition coil number one for cell number one this is a connector code okay C303 uh, and this is a pin number for the power 16A which is actually on the red green wire and the other wire is actually the control line which is connected to the, the engine control module and if you see they have different colors for different ignition coils like for uh, for, uh, for ignition coil cell number one uh, the pin number for control line is 1024 on a green wire on a green wire which is connected to the engine control module but what's interesting here is this 1024 uh, on the coil size is going to be exactly the same pin number on the uh, engine control module side right this is the engine control module we have same number right here as well so this green wire is connected to the ignition uh, coil number one and the engine control module uh, exactly by same pin number but it's really easy to find it on the uh, ignition coil side because you just have two pins and obviously the those two pins are connected to two different wires with different colors so super easy to find them on the ignition coil but here on uh, engine control module how how can we find them between uh, all the these wires and pins uh, so 1024 is connected to uh, this connector C300 okay so C300 is actually the connector code for this case so how are we gonna find the C300 the location because this engine control module does have uh, three connectors so C300 is actually one of them so we need to find the location first and the details for finding 10 uh, 24 uh, pin location again we go to component locations we use and we can just search for uh, C300 okay C300 is here and we're gonna find it just right there on this side of the engine so this is the front side it's located right here obviously this is gonna be the location of the engine control module uh, but if we find the connector details C300 here this is the one this is C300 uh, which is gonna give you all the details for that connector okay and the pin number that we were after was 1024 see this is a 1024 uh, pin number and it's giving you the uh, wire color as well which was gray okay 1024 so we have all the pin numbers here for different pins as well so you need to look for the exact same uh, configuration between those uh, three connectors because they are not exactly identical find the uh, the best match for these and this is going to be your uh, 1024 uh, for ignition coil number one and that's it we can do that for we can do that for other components as well for any other components you can do the same thing okay guys you see the ignition coil number one on this fourth exactly like the wind diagram that uh, i was showing you it's got two pins okay so this red green is actually the power supply and the other green is the control line as you had exactly in the wind diagram so see 
you got two pins and if you look at the back side of the connector so you got two wires one is the red green and the other one is just the green so green is going to be the control line for this ignition coil and uh, red green is the power supply for all uh, ignition coils on this car okay guys i'm removing the uh, engine control module and uh, you see there are uh, three connectors down there so I'm gonna remove them one by one to see which one is C300 the one that I am after uh, okay I have already removed the ECM and these are the ECM connectors and if you check the connectors two Two of those connectors are pretty much similar. This one is very different. So this is not the C300 that I'm after. So I need to just check between these two to see which one is the C300. And if you remember the wind diagram that I showed you guys, the, the connector itself, if you remember on C300, we have just three pins down here and three pins down there. And the, the top one is already empty. So this is what wind diagram shows us. Okay. So apparently considering the wind diagram, because I have one pin up here and one pin up there, this is not C300 that I'm after. But if you look the other one, three pins, one empty, three pins, one empty. So this is the 300, C300 connector that I am after. So <clears throat> we are looking for, uh, actually that's a green wire for, uh, Ignition coil number one. Okay, let's see if we can find it here. So what wind diagram shows us is uh, when you're looking at the connector from this way, this is going to be 1024, which is for control line and the ignition coil number one. Because we know the wire color is green, we need to just have a look at the back because the first uh, pin here is going to be the first wire here. And as, as you see, it's green right this is a green wire that i was uh showing to you guys and this is how you can use the uh, information on the wire diagram to locate the wires and the pins uh on the real car okay let's go to, uh to have a look at the other uh wind diagram which is a bit different from this one so this wind diagram is for uh Ford Fiesta 2014 um, and you're gonna see how it's how this one is different from uh, the previous one so you have your index here uh, again you have a list of all the uh, systems uh, so if you go for something like the fuse and relay box fuse and relay box information okay so you will have all the details of the engine fuse box and the interior fuse box here, the location and all the details you might want. The other one is the component location views. Okay, so see the component location views are uh, a bit different from the previous one, much more easier to, uh, to understand. The quality actually is, is better uh, and you have all the uh, details here to for to find the component locations right so you see uh, oil pressure control solenoid knock sensors and all the details are here okay but uh, if we start having a look at uh, something like uh, engine control for uh, 1.6 engine so you have the wind diagram here and the quality is better than the previous one. Uh, so you have the components all around here. Okay, so battery junction box, you have the junction box here, you have the PCM or power train control module there. And if you scroll down, you see other components as well, like the coolant temperature sensor. This is the crankshaft and crankshaft position sensor all the components are here <coughs> but uh, actually what is easier comparing to the previous one 
first of all you see the color codes you see the colors on the wires already so it's going to be much easier to find it out so you have three wires here for the crankshaft sensors you see the colors already and uh, there is slight differences on the uh, pin numbers and the connector codes because if you remember on the previous one the pin numbers were just very different but here we have the numbers on sequence obviously is going to be much easier to find it out like uh, the connector code for crankshaft sensor here is C1120 uh, and the pin numbers are 132. Okay, 132. So one, this one is going to be the voltage reference and this is a signal. Okay, so more uh, ideas here. And you see the other end on the other side, the pin numbers are not the same anymore. So so these three wires, which are for the crankshaft sensor, on the crankshaft sensor side, they are connected to this pin. They are connected to this connector, and these are the pin number. And on the PCM side, they are connected to these, actually this connector, and these are the pin numbers. And you see this, this line, this dashed line. Okay, so we have the connector code here, and this line which is actually connected all the other wires together it shows that the, all the other wires are connected actually are seated inside uh, this connector as well so it means uh, C1915E is for this wire and the other wire and all the wire all the other wires uh, down here okay but how how can we find the, the details for this one Let's uh, look for C1120 for the crankshaft sensor. If you scroll down, you see a list here for the connector C1120. Okay, this is the location engine front lower uh, front lower right side, and you can get some ideas as well. So if I click on the show, so you see the location see c1120 is giving you the component location okay and what else what else i'm gonna have let's hide this one first and go for the pinouts okay this is the pinouts so i'm gonna have three pins one two three and this table is giving me all the ideas that these three pins one two three uh, this is the circuit, this is the color, and the gauge for the wire itself, and the function. Okay, uh, what are the functions for any of those wires? We didn't have such a thing in the uh, previous uh, wire diagram. If we try something else like the ignition coil, we have two pins. Okay, uh, C, triple one, pin number one and two, and you have the uh, color code again and C triple one is going to be this C triple one show C triple one for that one this is actually what we are after and we can find the uh, connector view here too super easy you just need to follow the one uh, uh, follow the wind up okay but uh, if we try to make it more complicated if we try to find the other ends on the ECM side so we know that the connector code is this one C1915 a and we are looking for these pin numbers uh, this is the connector okay here we have the location let's find 19 15e yeah this is the one okay we have the uh, connector location here and if we go for uh, the pinouts I've got the pinouts here okay so all the pins are mentioned here I have a table down here as well uh, just for more details but super easy all the pins are numbered here you can find them really really easy 
uh, just uh, by following uh, the wine diagram and checking it out on uh, on the car as well. Okay, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, so this was just a guide to read the four wine diagrams and how to find the details. Uh, I'm gonna just make some other videos for each systems as well. So uh, we we can talk on every different systems like for the engine we will analyze the engine or starting system or any other systems we can talk about those systems and i'm gonna explain um, how to read the uh, wind diagram on those specific systems as well thank you very much guys for watching this video